Hi, so uh, welcome back to my workshop. So in this video, I'm going to be making some sports plaques, um, an Ingram rugby uh, team plaque and some Premier League football team plaques. I um, just want to take a moment just to show you the, the workshop. So in the last video I've done, um, I was in a bit of a mess. So you probably see we've done a lot of work since then. We put some racking in, uh, put a cyclone set up on the extractor, a little mini trend extractor down there. Um, got all the smart bench sort of in its new home. Some of the bits and pieces we've been making on the smart bench since it's in here. Um, made this as well. Um, this is a little light up VW logo. Uh, if I find the remote back here, uh, changes color, stuff like that. You can get it to flash sometimes. There we go. Fades between all different colors. A bit of fun. Great little project actually, I really enjoyed making it. Um, made a, a logo in in honor of Yeti. So that was a, a project, didn't go so well on the back, shall we say. Um, made a Yeti logo out of it. So anyway, so this is the workshop. Um, I've done a hell of a lot more clearing up in general and just sorting out and stuff like that. Um, and it's a much nicer space to operate in now. So we're gonna get set up for this plaque project um, and I'll see you over on the laptop. In this video, I'm going to be producing um, these plaques here. So what we've got is a England rugby plaque, 144 uh, mil by 200 mil, uh, Crystal Palace football plaque, and a Leeds United football plaque. So I'm pretty much at a stage where I've created some of the tool paths and I've set out some of the, the layout for it. So the finishing cuts are going to be a 10 mil by 30 mil, 60 degree V bit to give us all the detail. Um, the clearance path is going to be a 6 by 20 mil um, straight cutter. Um, so again, I'm going to run the tool path. This is how we're going to look. So I'll just move that around there for you. So if I zoom in, you'll get to see some of the details. So this outer layer is going to be the deep part, um, you know, and then you've got all the engrave on top of it. So it's the same then, if I move you up, you're gonna see this Crystal Palace one. All this background is gonna be cut away. Um, and then you've got the rugby rows. Now what you will see is where I've selected these as um, the V carve, you end up with this triangular shape. So we're gonna create some additional clearance passes now, um, just to sort of counteract that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go copy and then paste and i know my stock is 144 so if i go 150 just as a guess so that's going to blow that up ever so slightly so same for this one if we go 150 oh no hang on a second you don't want to do that i'm going to go control and then, um, copy and then paste and then we're going to use this one here change that to 150 now I've got the X um, and Y linked, so when I do that, it's going to keep all the apertures the same. And then it'd be the same for this one. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to separate all these a little bit to stop all the toolpaths clashing. Um, so again, we're going to go... No, trying to do the same again, aren't I? Need to create a separate line first. Okay, so what we've got now is we've got these ones here. So if I just pick those up and I move those down a bit. Um, yeah, I'll move that down a little bit more. So I've got 650ml of stock to play with, so I'm not too precious on it. What I've done is I've automatically put the ones with the rounded edges at the top and again the shield shape at the bottom so i've actually got space here i can put some screws into the uh, spoil board put all that together so before i forget um i need to add some tabs no i don't want those tabs so i want a tab there tab there hang on a second hang on a second so delete all tabs because what we're actually going to do is 
Yeah, that's all fine now. Sorry, I'm getting a bit betwixt in between now. So instead of having this one selected, I need these outer ones selected. So let's do that first. And what we should find is then when we recalculate all this. Okay. So I'll have a little look at this. Okay, what that's done now is that's got rid of these little V shape on the edges. See this V shape here? Now, as we go into the profile passes, we're going to add some tabs. Now, have one there, one there, one there, one there. And add another one there for strength. And we'll go center and center. We'll go one there. And we'll go two on here. Now, there's a reason why I've gone for these sides and I haven't gone for these sides on the rounded ones. Yeah, you know, it's like on here and here. So this is as I run this blank then through my router table to clean off the tabs. If I go on this side, you're going to have a cutter spiraling this way. Yeah. And you're going to have the end grain going vertically. And what that's going to do is that's going to pick that end grain up and try and move it that way. And you get lots of end grain breakout. And it's the same for the shield down here. Come on, zoom, zoom, zoom. Same for the shield down here. I'll do the same and it stops then any breakout. Now again, tabs wise, I want them 15 mil by eight mil and I want them 3D cut. Again, I'm gonna use the same six mil um, cutter. And now when I rerun these tool paths, you'll notice I've lost all of these V-shaped side pieces because effectively I'm gonna overcut the V over here and then the profile will be inside of it. So it just gives me a much cleaner finish and a lot less work than to um, finish up myself. I'm happy with the two tabs bridge in there. I'm happy with the two tabs bridge in there. It's going to help hold all this together. Um, and I'm happy pretty much with all that. So I am going to save some G codes and I'm going to use visible tool pass for this one and this one. So effectively, I'm going to run this clearance tool pass. Then I'm going to run the profile tool pass all with the same cutter. Once that toolpath is ran, I am then going to come back to this toolpath over here, which is our little 10 mil V car path, and that will be the final clearance path. So we'll just quickly save this file off. So my CNC plans master file, I'll just go into, I don't know, of course here, the mix triple, mix triple plaques for now. Okay, so again, we'll save this as mixed triple plaques six millimeter cutter. Okay, so I'll go and fire up CNC um, and then we'll transfer over to the GoPro, then and you can watch the first, uh, first tool path run. Okay, so this is our bit of um, bit of timber we're going to be working with. Um, it's a lovely bit of nice solid oak. Um, it's got some woodworm holes in it here, so I'm not going to go any further than this. Um, but apart from that, it's a nice piece of timber. So we're just going to work to the, the 145 um, by 650. So for this, it's going to be a really cruel, crude sort of tool holding strategy. Um, So like I was saying on, uh, on the laptop, um, I've got the oval of the rugby plaque here at the top and I've got the shield shape of the Liverpool, uh, sorry, Leeds badge at the bottom. So it should help to keep the cutter away from the screws. So 
we've got some 30 mil screws now um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the edge of this plank and line it up with the edge of the spoil board which I already know is running true to the uh, to the Y axis there we go so nothing too fancy with this no toggle plank no nothing so it ain't really necessary and I'm using the screws more and more where I can get away with it because um, you know it's a it's a nice secure hold you know so as ever on yet his beautiful console system um, just opening up some stuff now now there's been a whole lot of new features added to um, Yeti Smart Bench where you can look at what they call the metadata and you can add metadata. Um, at the moment, I'm not using um, the new file manager, I'm having a few issues with that. But when I switch the machine on tonight, it was mentioned in an update, so I'm sure somebody's already on the idea of fixing that. However, we've got our mixed um, triple plaque clearance pass set up. So remember, this is going to do the clearance and the edge profile cuts. I'm going to ask it to check. So I've set the X and Y datum, I've set the Z height. So now I'm just going to let it run and check my file to make sure I haven't missed anything. So I'm not 100% sure how well the camera can pick up on this because this little crappy LCD screen on the GoPro ain't the best. So one of the features I've always loved about Yeti is, I'm going to just take you off for a minute so I can move you down and I can see the screen properly then right so I can definitely see that I hope you can so one of the things I love about Yeti um, and one of the things that really made me want to buy a smart bench over sort of other models out there is effectively I've got this set up on the bed and come into this feature then and I can actually see ah, the light's not great is it I can see where my project is in the world and I can see then just off that little logo then the crosshairs logo where my smart bench is positioned now so I know I am good to go so we'll press we'll press play now and we'll watch your girl click in action we want it set it for right motion um, if we pause it we want the Z head to lift some health and safety and then go packs off of the smart bench um, I've given the surface a little bit of a quick sand over with a orbital sander um, the tabs um, possibly just see the polished witness marks there from where I've cut the tabs off so just turn that off now so yeah so I've gone around with the flush cutting bit in the router and just taking the uh, the tabs off so I'll be going around it now with a sander um, I usually use a little bit of a wire brush and just take all the internal fuzzes off Let's see like if I can hold on to the bloody bit of wood see the, the fuzzes come off yeah relatively easy a little bit of time a um, little bit of prep up with the sand and then they'll be ready then for some some clear lacquer to be sprayed so yeah I think things like these are just a given you know they come out really really well and then you've got the stuff like this crystal palace plaque you can see the the details very very fine um 
you know really happy with that really happy with that that eagle looks absolutely superb so yeah it's gonna be a bit of time now you know these don't come off the smart bench ready to put in an envelope <laughs> they don't come off of any cnc ready to put in an envelope so it's just gonna be a little bit of time cleaning up some of these edges um you know and i'll, I'll, I'll go through with a wire brush um i'll go around all the edges then with the orbital sander and then just finally finishing off them with a little bit of hand sandpaper and sometimes um a little bit of dremel you know a little bit of dremel action just to uh clean up these last little bits but i'll come back to you before i go but um yeah i hope you like them so far So here's the finished Crystal Palace plaque. Quite happy with how that came out. It's the first time I've ever cut that one. Um, so this is the rewritten Leeds plaque. Um, I just saw on camera, I was having problems with uh, getting this file set up and getting it to copy all this detail for the V-carve earlier, but you know, Perseverance paid off. So there's that one. Again, I'm chuffed with that. It's not the first time I've cut that one, but it's the first time I've cut this file. Um, and it's the second time round cutting this um, England one here. And again, I'm, I'm really chuffed at how that came out. Um, came out an exact carbon copy of the last one um, that I cut a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, it just goes to show that this machine's capabilities to repeat work is, is pretty spot on. So I'm gonna finish these now with um, some clear lacquer. Um, what I'm finding is dust coats on everything. Um, you can come back then and do a full coat. So I'm going to switch the positive air unit on so you won't hear a lot. So I'll probably end up muting the audio on this part, but um, I'll just take some final footage then. Let me move you around. I'll just take some final footage then of me spraying these. So you can see, you know, as how the color changes and as they, um, as they, you know, you can see the color change then. As the clear lacquer hits the oak, it is, it is quite nice. Very satisfying. Anyway, you guys take care um, and hope to catch you on the next one.